Good afternoon, Prinhanda. Just to let you know, we'll be starting in um, about 30 seconds time. So make sure you're comfy, um, grab a drink and uh, welcome to the session today, the fourth session on branding. Okay, so we're going to make a start. So welcome to session four on branding. Um, just to let you know, you will have a control panel on your right hand side. Um, you are all muted at the moment. Um, if you have got any questions or any queries, then please send us messages through the chat function. Um, we will be having a 10 minute question and answer session at the end of the webinar. So please post any questions that you may have throughout the session. Um, and also as well with the session, make sure you plan in some time afterwards to reflect um, on what you're going to hear today um, in terms of actions that you're gonna take going forward. So if you've got any burning questions, remember, um, to type them in. So we've got a fantastic lineup today for the fourth session. Um, so my name is Diana Griffiths and I'm from Huartag and I'm your host for today's session. So I'll be hosting the Q&A session at the end. Um, we've got Santia from Simply Do and she's going to be talking you through the Simply Do Ideas Generation platform. And then our guest today, our guest speaker today, who's going to be talking you all about her, talking to you all about her branding journey, is Seaned Owen, who is the CEO of Tanya Whitebits. Um, so welcome to the Make It Happen session on behalf of Huara Teg. Um, the session's actually funded by NatWest and the project is supported by Simply Do Ideas. So it's all for you, for you future female founders. So thank you very much as well for our um, guest today who is representing Big Ideas Wales who are there to support uh, people who are starting up in business through Business Wales. So without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to Zantia, who is going to talk to you with regards uh, to the Simply Do platform. Okay, that's great. Hi everyone, my name is Shanti Salmanka and I'm from Simply Do Ideas. As Diana mentioned, yes, we are working alongside Horateg on this amazing project and in conjunction with these fab um, events, there is a platform for you to be able to take your idea and flesh it out a bit more, but on paper, or in this case, virtually. It's a quite simple process to get sort of registered on. You'd type in www.sdi.click forward slash make it happen into your browsers. You then register and you can get started on your idea. And the whole point of this is to give you a structured six step process to put that idea down and flesh it out, letting you think about customers, your competitors, alongside everything that you've heard of at the event to help you take that idea into a business. And that's really it from me. I will be at the end for any questions regarding the platform, but it's over to you. Hi, I've just muted myself there. Thank you guys. Um, I think I've got a presentation which needs to come up on the screen so I can talk you through my journey. Um, I'm not actually in control of that, somebody else is. So I'm gonna hang on and wait for the um, first slide to come up, if that's possible. Um, and then I can start introducing my brand and my journey. Is there a page before here? Or should I get started? This, I'm quite new to Zoom as well, by the way. I have got my notes here. Um, I think we're all yeah. with this. It's okay. Um, we're just going to. Ah, there we are. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a bit weird not being in control we're of this. We're just going to be swapping presenters now. Um, okay. So just... mm -hmm. 
So uh, just to quickly introduce Shoned. Um, Shoned uh, is uh, representing Big Ideas Wales today. Um, she's from the retail sector in Gwynedd. And um, you work hard, don't you, juggling motherhood um, and your business, but it's all paying off uh, at the moment. Um, you recently won the uh, Virgin Pioneer of the Week and uh, Network She's Small Business of the Year. So congratulations on that. So lots of grit and determination um, in terms of taking your business idea forward. So without further ado, I'll pass you over to Shoded. Thank you. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction. Um, I think I probably jumped on a bit earlier than I, I should do, but I think we're all learning with Zoom and this is the new normal now, isn't it? Um, so as you mentioned, I'm Shoned Owen. I'm more commonly mistaken for Tanya because it's my brand name. So most people greet me by the name Tanya. Um, but I will talk a little bit more about my branding um, as we go along. Um, as you mentioned, I'm also a role model for Big Ideas Wales and pre-lockdown I would go into schools and colleges and run entrepreneurial workshops, something I never thought I would do and it's a really rewarding role as well. So thank you Big Ideas Wales for inviting me today um, to share my journey with you. This is some of this journey I do share with um, pupils in schools and colleges as well. I've just adapted it a little bit today. So if we go on to the next slide, please. Um, OK, this is a snapshot of my, my branding and myself, I suppose, and the mood board of what I'm about and how I've got to where I am today. Um, so I, start, I suppose I should go back to my early years quickly just to, to give you a little bit of information about myself. So I loved primary school. I found it creative. I felt safe there because it was only a small school and I didn't feel intimidated or that it was competitive in any way. Um, however, secondary school was a different experience. I found it academically, I struggled. I wasn't top of the class or bottom of the class, I was in the middle. And sometimes when you're in the middle, you're in no, no man's land. You're not excelling in anything and you're not failing, you're just coasting. And I never had that sense of knowing what I wanted to do with my um, career wise. And all my school reports used to say could do better. So that was a little bit demoralizing. So I left school feeling a little bit of a failure because I hadn't achieved I was never proud of my um, my grades in school. It was nothing that I would, you know, meant, uh, nothing that I could boast about, I suppose. Um, and then my early career was in sports development and I loved my job. And um, one day my, my boss pulled me in and my job was funded by the Welsh Assembly. And he said, um, there may not be funding in a year's time. Um, so I'm just giving you the heads up. And having limited qualifications, having been told in school as well, you know, you could do better. I think I started like with this imposter syndrome of thinking, oh, you know, I'm that voice in your head that tells you you're not good enough, you're not achieving. Um, and that fear that stops people from starting their own business and venturing because you just think you're going to fail because you've always been told in school that you're not good enough. Um, but I thought, well, whilst I'm working full time, you know, it, it is sink or swim. I will need, I'll, I'll start with a side hustle and just see where that takes me. And then if I lose my job, I'll have to analyze the situation then, I suppose. So I'd always been into fake tan and beauty. And I think health, being in the um, industry that I was in, so I was in sports development, but I think health and beauty and well being kind of come hand in hand. So I'd always had a vested in, um, interest in that industry. Um, and I think that's one big thing if you're thinking of setting anything up yourself is that you have a passion for it which I did um, I've been through every fake tan disaster you can think of so it's been a journey you know using fake tan myself and then also getting to know other brands and what I liked and what I didn't like and so on and so I did a spray tanning course in I would say the fake tan capital of the north is Liverpool um, so I did my spray tanning course there and I got qualified and I came home, I bought, I bought the kit and it was like, I think I invested £700 in the kit. Um, 
and I realized as well at the time that there was nobody in the area doing mobile tanning so that was my unique selling point at the time so initially I set myself up as a mobile tanning technician I was working full-time and it was just a side hustle just because I was thinking if my job expires within a year then at least I'll have something to fall back on if we go to the next slide um there we are okay so the so where the business idea came from initially as i mentioned it was a side hustle it was a service not an actual physical product so it evolved that idea evolved along the way so it was a journey um i never ever thought that i would develop my own product and it was only because after i did the course in liverpool I did 10 practices. I could have given up then because I turned my mum and my cousin orange overnight after my first couple of practices and I was losing confidence and thinking, oh, what have I done? I've invested hundreds of pounds in this course and I'm not even good at it. How can I charge people? But it's practice makes perfect. And I realised that the gauge on the gun was on the wrong setting and they'd had like way too much fake tan. Um, so I perfected my technique and started investing and buying products that were on the market at the time that were available for me. And it was through that that I realised I didn't like some of them. They were orange, they were sticky, um, they smelt like digestive biscuits. I didn't like some of the colour guides. So I kept going through different brands that I would buy and try. And I always had this, there was always something that I didn't like. And it was then that I started to think um, about developing my own products and thinking, well, if I had my own, I wouldn't have it sticky. And if I had it, my own brand, I would have it vegan friendly, cruelty free. And I had all these things on my wish list. Um, and I'd called my service, actually. So the name Tanya Whitefits comes from a, a love of puns. I just love puns. I love companies that I know of called there's there's a um oh a fish and chip shop up in north wales and it's called the cod father and i just love funny names that put a smile on your face there's um a bread shop called bread pit um yeah that kind of name so i love the name tanya white bits it was a personal catchphrase and although it came from a personal perspective as the brand has grown um the tan is for everyone it's gender neutral even though People think my name is Tanya um, and they don't actually get the pun initially. And sometimes that's followed by laughter. And I just like, I, I love that um, behind the brand. So yeah, so the idea was initially a, um, a service. It developed then into a product. I already had the name. And so I trademarked the name and registered it and then thought, well, I need branding, I need the logo. I was working on a formula with a chemist with all my wish list and everything that I wanted. And um, I was thinking, well, I need the logo. I can't just sell bottles to salons and shops and no logo, no branding on there. So if we go to the next clip, thank you. Um, just so I can, this is the first look of the branding and what we came up with initially. So again, you can go to the next one. Um, okay, so the initial logo, so I had, I didn't have much of a budget and I hadn't really thought it through either. And I look at this now and I do cringe, even though the, um, the creative guy that I worked with, he was a graphic designer. He was an award-winning graphic designer, but I would definitely not have, come up with this later on um it's only through making mistakes i suppose that you realize what works and what doesn't work so if we initially talk about the logo so you can see it's quite a dark logo and the the colors are quite organic colors and the the product had organic and natural ingredients as well so i was thinking along the lines of having the, the earthy colors in there um, none of us had any idea about branding, to be fair. Um, I was sitting in my sports development office one day and I was working on the formula and I asked somebody, just, do anybody, does anybody know who does logos around here, like locally up in North Wales? And one of the guys there said, oh, there's that farmer up in Penrath. And 
he's a farmer by trade, but he's a graphic designer as well and an award winning one. He's never worked with any beauty brands before. His work was more like sky fi stuff and, and that kind of thing. But anyway, I phoned him up, went over and I said, I just need a logo. And I had no marketing background myself. You know, my background was sports development, being a mum, um, using lots of product, but hadn't really thought about how I wanted it to look. And I suppose my misconception was that I thought he was going to come up with ideas and then I would choose one. But he wanted me to come up with the ideas so that he could design them. And I, I had no idea. I was so indecisive and I kept toing and froing. So we came up with this logo. Um, we thought we'd have we would break down the the words so it is tan your white bits. So we have the different color schemes going on there. Um, in reflection now, you like it's it's too dark. I'm stuck with those colour schemes. It wouldn't work on black or white background if you had to use just black or white. Um, and with that logo having only those colours, they were my brand colours, and I hadn't I hadn't even thought about that. So when I was developing the brand, I was stuck with those colours, and I didn't even like them. Um, the other thing was um oh the moose bottles that you see on the bottom uh, were developed later on and then on the right hand side you'll see the bigger bottles with the half naked woman on the back with i don't know why she's got angel wings i can't remember why we came up with that um but it's so wrong now i realize because it's only representing one body type one skin type one hair type and it's not inclusive at all. Um, but I was stuck because I'd invested money into this logo, into the logo, into the branding. Um, I wasn't even selling that many, so I couldn't ask, you know, start designing again. I'd also trademark the logo as well. So that was, a, there was a cost to that. Um, and the minute I launched, I didn't even like it. And I knew, I thought it's okay, but I didn't love it. And when you're launching something and you don't love the look of it, it's difficult to have that passion behind it to say, you know, this is this is great. And I knew the product inside was great, but I just hadn't spent enough time in the development stage of the branding. But there we are. Um, when I rebranded, um, it cost me a lot more. So I went to an agency and I don't think I would have changed anything because if I had invested thousands early on in the branding process, I may not have sold anything. I didn't know when I developed the branding and this, the, the product that I was going to sell one. I was using it myself because I was doing spray tans, um, but nobody bought anything off me. So in, in hindsight, I suppose it was the right journey for me to, to learn from that mistake before going on to the rebrand. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much early on um, about, you know, obviously you want to get it right, but it's the cost. The cost for me was a low cost. I think the logo was about £80 and I think the whole design cost me about 180 which was nothing really. And considering the times that I was toing and froing to this um, farmer's house to come up with this, I don't think he even paid for his time, to be fair. But anyway, it launched and... Um, Initially, it was the professional spray tan solution. I hadn't anticipated how difficult it would be trying to sell something that nobody'd heard of um, and having that trust with the brand, especially with tanning. Um, you have to trust that in six hours or in eight hours that the end result is going to be OK. So it was really difficult trying to get people to to invest in it initially and the sales were slow and I was still working full time and I was juggling it um, and it was only when I launched the mousse which you see on the bottom below the logo over there um, the, the mousse is the self tan yeah there's a little arrow there um, is the self tan so when I was selling the mousse I was selling business uh, yeah business to customer whereas the bigger bottles with the half naked woman I was selling um, to the professional industry, so to salons and so on. That was really difficult because salons, would they wanted to invest in established, well-known brands and they hadn't heard of this. So I had so many people say no thanks with the professional tanning bottles. 
Um, but when I started selling the mousse, selling straight to the customer, it's that's when it gathered momentum and that's when I started juggling um, the business. So if we move on to the next clip, um, so rebranding. So yeah, I decided it's time now to rebrand and to get a new look and a new logo. I wanted something sleek and contemporary. I wanted something that worked on black and white. Um, I wanted something that was versatile. Um, and yeah, this was the new logo. So I worked alongside this time um, a Welsh artist. I love her work anyway. Um, she's well known in Wales for her um, bright colours, her neon prints, and her name is Nikki Pilkington. So along with Nikki, she and a branding agency up in North Wales, um, we came up with a new logo, new colour schemes. And yeah, I just love the look of it now. And I'm so proud um, of the relaunch and the the brightness of the colours as well. I just love how it how it pops. Um, if we can actually go back to the previous clip, so I, I forgot to mention one thing. Oh, the previous one again. Um, when they, th so I went to my local supermarket, who are really good at supporting local businesses, and I asked them, "Would you like to start selling this mousse, the self tan mousse?" Um, that's the one on the bot on the bottom left. Um, and they said, "Oh, we'll give it a go and, and see how it goes." And when they put that up on the shelf. And it was next to the toiletries. So you had like your shampoos and stuff. And then it was next to toilet cleaning things. And I and they were all pine green colours. And I just thought, oh, it's it's even, it doesn't even fit in to the shelf with the where the beauty things were, where the shampoos and the conditioners and skincare. It looked like it should be more with the toilet cleaning stuff because they are mostly pine colours. And I hadn't even anticipated that either. Um so that I was disappointed when when um with the colours, but there we are. Yeah, move, moving back, move fast forward again, um, two slides. So so yeah, the new colours were were much more um contemporary, up to date, and I was obviously attracting a new client base, a new um a lot more in, interest when the branding looked the way it did. And and Previous to that, so many people were telling me, why are you changing it? You know, don't change it, it's fine. Um, but no, it needed to change. And if you need to rebrand, there's ne you know, there's never a wrong way of, you can always start with one look and you can develop that look and it can just get better and better. Lots of bigger brands have rebranded al along the way. And it's part of your brand journey as well. Um, so the next clip is, oh, this is a video clip of, my brand journey. It does have um, music in the background, but starting off with the spray tanning, um, again, you can see the, the bottles that they're the ones, the green ones. Um, I did smaller pop-up shops early on. I still do pop-up shops. Um, and then a couple of awards there. Uh, the next British beauty brand was last year. So I think it's important sometimes to look back to see how far you have come, especially when we've gone through things like this COVID has been quite hard going for businesses and it has changed the direction of, I was meant to be launching a new product in, um, that's the artist, Nikki Pilkington, by the way, that did my um, rebranding. Um, yeah, so it's good to look back and see how far you have come. Um, and since the early days, I've developed more products to the range and I am working on more products again. Um, I wholesale with Salons Direct, they're wholesalers from um, up north and I'm still focused on developing the brand. Um, I'm not in any big retailers. I stock in small um, salons and stockists through my wholesale. Um, but I would like to look at developing um, the brand further. And I think now it looks the part. Um, it looks great. That was in London in um, Stylist Live. That one was in Glasgow over there. Um, so, yeah, that's just to give you a snapshot of my, my journey. And um, well, there's quite a few clips here, actually. There was, this is a girl singing. So on a Friday, we do a hashtag Tanya Roki. So clients and customers will send videos to our social media of themselves singing into a bottle of fake tan. And it was just a gimmick that I started as a marketing gimmick, I suppose. The industry is very um, 
it can be overpopulated the, the tanning industry there's so many different brands out there and i just wanted to to get my audience involved and just do something different so these are just snapshots of customers singing into their their bottles they either sing or mime so it's very much a fun brand um the name the ethos of the name is quite a fun pun um and that's where the name confusion comes people thinking that my name is actually tanya um that's it um okay and the next clip trying to refresh my clips here so um the new range of products again we can move on to the next clip so as you can see here, this is how it looks now. So there isn't the half naked woman with the, with the wings on the back. Um, it's all very tropical looking um, and it just does pop as well. The colours are bright. I did want something different. The tanning industry has tends to be like gold, bronzy colours. So I just wanted something that would stand out on the shelf. Um, so now I've got the self tanning range, the professional tanning range, and there's complementary products as well that you can see featured there. Um, the next clip is um, okay. So the business development side of um, where I started was social media. I would say has played a huge role in the business growth. Um, and telling that that story as well. So the clips that you saw previously were clips that have featured on my Instagram. And the customer, they like to know your business journey, that it's not a faceless brand. So it's always good to, to showcase that. Um, another thing that helped with my branding as well was um, accolades and awards that we've mentioned previously, because that will give you a platform as well for people to get to know the brand. Um, Pop-up shops and exhibitions have been good as well for brand awareness. And just get just people seeing that same branding over and over again um so yeah it, there's a lot of, of um work that goes behind the scenes of the how it looks as well um business wales and local business support has been um supportive in my journey as well i've had locally i've had interest free loans from a business hub um, they're called bernessa up on the um, north west wales um, peninsula um, and then as well, for me, I think what changed the, the complete look of the branding was collaborating with the creative agency that I did um, and an artist as well for her input um, and not giving up is the main thing. There was so many, so many times along the way where I could have given up, um, but I suppose that determination from being told, you know, you're not good enough in school made me think, no, I, I you know, I can do this. I'm not giving up. So having that determination. Um, the next slide, trying to refresh myself. Okay, if you'd like to keep in touch. So these are some of my socials. Um, I do run other businesses as well, alongside um, the main one, obviously being Tanya Whitebits. Um, during the lockdown, I launched a little um, boutique, an online one called Mimi Boo Boutique. So I've got twin girls, they're 17 and our pet names for them are Mimi and Boo when they were younger not so much now um so I always thought I would do something with that name so I launched this little boutique and I buy from um small independents throughout Wales their jewelry and handmade handbags so it's a good way of keeping the economy going as well um it gave me something to do because I wasn't manufacturing over two months during the lockdown which was a worry for the business um but now I'm back to manufacturing and um yeah so that's one sideline I also oh I started a personal blog as well um again it's something I started during lockdown and it's called Tanya not Tanya because everyone calls me Tanya um and it's a mix of beauty, lifestyle, travel. Um, there's another one as well. I can't remember what it is because it is quite new. Um, but yeah, I, I'm enjoying doing that as a sideline. I also do Instagram workshops for businesses. I've got over 20,000 um, followers on my in, on my Tanya White Bits Instagram. So I share a lot of my tips that I've learned along the way of how I gained um my audience on socials so I, I do those workshops and I also have a nail and um tanning studio back home here as well but it's closed at the moment um so yeah it's 
there's a few things going on um but if you'd like to ask any questions i'm not sure how we do this but is it a chat mode or is somebody going to feed anything back to me but thank you all for listening in this morning um this is quite new to me and it's quite strange because usually when i do presentations in a in a classroom format or publicly you can um you bounce off other people, people can ask you questions and you can gauge your how you steer the, the presentation. You can see if somebody's getting a bit bored over there, you can change it. But with Zoom, it's a bit impersonal. So, um, but it, it's all good. It's all a learning curve and um, it's it's the future, I suppose. It's the new normal now, isn't it? Um, but thank you, NatWest, Chwarateg, and there's another agency as well. Um, so I don't miss anybody out. Um, that has hosted today. Thank you. Any questions? I think somebody's coming on now and somebody's going to join me. I think. Sean Ed. Oh, hi. Hi, it's Rodri in the background here. There are some questions coming in. Um, Sophie's raised a question. I don't sure if you can answer this for us, but how did you get past the feeling of imposter syndrome? Um, that's a, an issue that a lot of women are struggling with, especially setting up a new business. Did you did you find you were struggling in that area, and what did you do to overcome that? Yeah, I think everybody. It depends if when you. I, I find that it's something that happens when I go out of my comfort zone. So, like this morning before coming on here, that imposter syndrome in your head is like. Do you remember Nikki Graham on Big Brother saying, "Who is she?" who is she and like you have that voice in your head like why would anybody want to listen to you or your story you're not interesting you're not, but you have to silence that voice because it will stop you from progressing in your business it will it will just you know stand in your way so you have to kind of ignore it and but also i think that sharing it with others you will find that other people have imposter syndrome occasionally as well i don't have it all the time but when I'm out of my comfort zone or, um, for example, like this morning, then yes, I do. But then if I listen to that voice, I wouldn't have done this presentation this morning and I wouldn't have shared my journey with people. And somebody that's listening in might find it useful, hopefully. Um, so it's just about supporting each other. And, and it, you have to like say to that voice, talk to the hand, because it's only something that you feel, isn't it, in your head. Nobody else is telling you that apart from being told in school, but I didn't do that well in school. Um, but yeah, it is a battle that you have to just keep um, pushing to the side and not letting it get in your way. It's that fear of failure. It's like I've set up this sideline business during the lockdown. I've invested, you know, some money in products I'm hoping to sell online. And it was it's always that fear of what if nobody buys anything? What if nobody's interested? What if, you know, what if, what if, what if? But try and think of the, the positives and just, I'd say, just go for it. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Thank you for that. I don't know if we're going to take any more questions now or we're going to do that at the end. Um, but while we're thinking about that, someone else has asked about. Actually, that's. Uh... Sorry, go on. I can't hear anything at the moment. Right, Seanad, another question. Yeah, sorry, um, Seanad was talking about investment and actually that's one of the questions. So how much money have you invested? A lot. <laughs> um, along the way, there's been, you know, there's been mistakes. Like my branding initially was, I. I'm not very good back of house, um, so you'd have to, I'd have to look at all, to, to, and I tend not, you know, I'm more, I'm the practical creative side, um, but yeah, I have invested um, a lot of money over the years. I've made some mistakes, but I've learned from them and it's got me to the next stage. Um, I haven't had any funding. I've had interest-free loans and I've borrowed from um, family as well um but uh yeah I, other, otherwise i've just had loans to um expand the business i'm not at the stage where i'm looking for any more at the moment but um 
a lot you know along the journey than I have yes I have had but not any external investments Okay, another question coming in, Seanad, if you don't mind answering. Um, a lot of people, when they start their business, have concerns about income and giving up, you know, either a full-time job or a part-time job and, and then having to look forward and plan and, and work out where that income is, is coming from. How difficult did you find that and was that a challenge for you? Yes, definitely. That's the one thing that stopped me from progressing to the next stage. So when I was working full time and the business was growing and I was struggling, juggling everything like motherhood, um, the business growth, my full time job. Um, it, and I was spray tanning as well, three, four nights a week um, and quite busy with that. So I started to mess up in my full time job and like double booking appointments for spray tans, double booking a school for a sailing session when it was only supposed to be for one school. And I just thought, and I've always been quite conscientious in my work and I thought I can't carry on like this. Um, so, and I was having frequent meltdowns as well with the the juggling um, at home, my poor husband. And um, I, he came home one day and he said, you know, I can't, you can't, I've always, he's always, felt that I've had a spark around what I've done and he could just see that spark getting less and less because I couldn't hold it together everywhere so he just said quit your job and it was like music to my ears and then I went to work the following day put my notice in came home and he said you've done what you've quit your job and I said but we've talked about this but I don't think he anticipated that I was going to do it straight away um and then so obviously I had to look at part-time job initially to bridge that gap because the business wasn't making enough money for me to take a wage um, and I needed money you know I, I like if I was low maintenance I wouldn't have had to work um, but I like to have my treats as well so I work two days a week initially in a doctor's surgery if anybody here works for the NHS I take my hat off to you it was a whole different other experience for me they work so hard um, and I did that for nine months. Um, I was doing audio typing and the receptionist there. And it was only two days a week. Then I went from there and I worked in a petrol station. Um, that was good because it allowed me the time to answer my emails in between customers coming in. Whereas in the doctor's surgery, there was no letter. Um, and even though I'd, I'd reduced my hours and I was able to juggle my work for the two days that I was in the doctor's surgery, it was it was solid, you know, um hard going so the petrol station worked okay and then from there i worked in a health spa for four months and then finally i took the plunge um so i've been working for myself now for a a, a few years um so it is it sometimes you have to make those baby steps and you have to you know i went for minimum wage jobs because i wanted to stay local I just wanted a income coming in and just to work a couple of days before making the final jump. Um, so there is a way, if there's a will, there's a way, I think, but it is difficult when you have bills to pay. And it was just having my husband say to me, quit your job, even though I did it earlier than he anticipated. It's it's turned out okay in the end. So yeah, hope that um helps. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Thank you very much. I'm just going to introduce myself, actually. My name's Rodri, so I work for Qualiteg. Um, I'm a marketing partner, so this is all really interesting and fascinating stuff. Um, I just want to remind everyone that the Simply Do platform that Shantia was talking about earlier, really great place to go on there and develop your ideas and you can share your ideas with friends. You're not on your own coming up with this business. The platform is there to kind of help you think through all of the things that Shantia has been talking about. Um, and another question for you, Shona, if it's okay. Um, one of the big things about starting a business, certainly in terms of branding and marketing, is doing some, some research into your customers and your potential customers. How did you go about researching your target audience? Um, I, to be honest, early on, it was just things that I liked and things that I wanted. I knew that I wanted it to be 
vegan friendly, cruelty free. I wanted it to have natural and organic ingredients. And I should have probably asked more people about it. it was just that that was what my wish list was. I didn't want it to be sticky. Um, but yeah, definitely, you know, doing your research is, and I knew at the time as well, that vegan products were something that was on the app, something that was becoming quite popular with salons and so on. Um, so it, I just wanted that, that for it to be vegan friendly. Um, but I never actually researched it and did any, you know, sent out any questionnaires to any salons, which I suppose that should have been the right way of doing it. And then that would have helped you, you know, given you um, a fuller answer, I suppose, of what your audience um, wanted, no, your potential customers. But for me, it was more it came because it came, the idea came from a personal perspective and it was what I wanted in a product. And it was what I felt was miss, missing and what I was searching for. Um, but that's still only my journey. I don't think there's a right and wrong. Um, but I do think it's good to do your market research, definitely. I just got lucky with that one. Ah, thank you. There's no right and wrong way of doing it. Um, obviously, you're quite intuitive about your customers and you knew the market already, so you kind of leapt onto that. That's awesome. Um, a few people have asked how they can get in touch with you. Do you want to just kind of shout out your website address and your Instagram name and we can... Kind of so I've got a few accounts on Instagram. It's a full-time job doing them at the moment. Um, so the main one is on Instagram is Tanya Whitebits. Um, my email is post at tanyawhitebits.co.uk for my email address. Um, I've also got a personal Instagram account called Sean Ed Owen, but it's Sean Ed with an S-H, S-H-O-N-E-D. And that's mainly like behind the scenes where I just document my not just Tanya stuff, but all my dogs on there, my husband's on there occasionally. It's just, and it's part of my personal blog as well. I kind of link them in. Um, then I've got the Mimi Boo Boutique, which is again on Instagram, Facebook, and Shopify account. Um, I'm trying to think what other way. Um, I am on Twitter, but I'm not active on Twitter. I'm not very good on Twitter because all my branding's very visual, so it's not really something that I've um and I'm not very good on LinkedIn either um but I am on there so if you message on LinkedIn that I'll probably get back to you I just tend to focus on the platforms that work best for for the branding um so yeah I hope that helps fantastic um just one more thing really from me where, where are you going with all of this business are you going to conquer the world with your tanning products what's what's the future look like yeah, well, I, when it started, I always thought, well, I'll just sell locally. And then when I was selling locally, I thought, well, I'll just sell nationally. And then now I'm thinking global. You've got to think big, haven't you? You've got to have that dream because it's what drives you and what keeps you going. Um, I would love to develop the brand until it was a well-known brand like your Saint-Tropez or like the bigger brands, the big competitors. And there's always room for a new one. Every couple of years, you'll see a new brand come in. You know, it was... Saint Tropez have been there, Fake Bake have been there. You've got, um, oh, there's an Australian one now that's really, you know, like the number one tan in the UK. Um, I, I'd love to be the number one tan in the UK. So I just keep going with it, I think. And Lovely. I have a you. question for you, Tanya. Um, you were saying Anna. before about, um, I'm back. My, my internet's back. <laughs> it well was done. Apologies for a while. Um, I was just going to ask you, you were talking about a chemist and that side of things. How did you sort of find a chemist, know what to do in terms of creating the product? Yeah, there was, this was a lot, Google will be your best friend. Um, I wanted it to be a UK manufacturer, so it is made in the UK, but it's the first Welsh fake tan company. Um, and yeah, it was a lot of, you learn so much along the way just by speaking to people. Um, Google, again, was to find um, a chemist, a manufacturer. And I haven't told anybody who my manufacturer is because that's like your intellectual property in your business. Um, but yeah, there was a lot, hours and hours. And I remember my, my husband initially was thinking, 
you know, where is this going? Where is it going? And I never thought anybody would actually. So initially there was a cost involved um, a lot, um, but it, it has paid off. I just knew what I wanted as part of the ingredients as well, because I was, I'd was i been into tanning for years. Um, so I knew um, on the ingredient list that I didn't want any parabens in it. Paraben is a um, it's an ingredient that increases the shelf life on beauty products. It, it's in loads of products, but it's been linked to breast cancer studies. It's not been proven to be the cause, but there is a link there. So I knew I don't want any paraben in there. Um, I wanted natural and organic ingredients. So I, I knew everything that I wanted in there. Well, not everything, but I had my wish list. Um, I just needed somebody to create it for me, to create the formula. Um, yeah, but it was, I suppose, if I start, if I knew when I started how much, how much was involved, I probably might not have even started because it's been a massive journey, but it's been rewarding and, and worth it as well. Um, but you just learn, and I'm still learning along the way. I've got so much to learn, but I'm still here and still still growing the, the brand and brand awareness. So, yeah, hope that has helped, helped answer the question. Amazing. Thank you. Um, there was somebody else asking in terms of investment. So you said you initially started off with £750, was it? Yeah, for the spray tan equipment. So I did the cut. There was the course, the insurance, the initial kit, which was the pop up tent um, and the um, actual spray tanning stuff. And I think I bought I, I went to town. Actually, I bought everything. I even bought a diet and appointment book and everything. It probably shouldn't have cost that much. But I just I was, you know, just wanted when you're back investing in something new, I, I tend to get overexcited. Um, so I invested in it all and my husband was like, you spent how much? He said, you, how do you know you'll make your money back? Well, in seven weeks, I'd made my money back on that investment. And it was an awesome side hustle because it was a lot of um, cash as well. So, um, which I did declare, by the way, most of it. Um, and yeah, it was it was great on top of my full-time wage and doing that a few nights a week it was quite lucrative and it was only you know 10 minutes spray tan and it was done um so yeah the initial investment was about seven seven hundred pound i think so uh, you said it a few times actually it's having that side hustle isn't it if people yeah. have got fears if people have got fears and they haven't got the capital to invest straight away it's all about having um something to fall back on as well isn't it and making sure that you manage your time in terms of your focus on the business and then the focus on your work life balance yeah definitely i mean even now i don't just have what my eggs all in one basket i have the other businesses as well that i i run as well um, I suppose that, but that's because I'm doing it full time now. Um, but yeah, there is, it, is, it was difficult making that transition because I, I went for jobs that I wouldn't have chose, probably chosen, but I just needed to get an income. Um, but I was willing to do anything. I would have, you know, cleaned anything, worked in Asda. I tried to get into the local Asda, but the, I just missed the recruitment because I was, um, they have people stocking shelves in the evening. Um, so I, I just missed that one. Um, but yeah, it's just willing to just to see your dream come into reality. Sometimes you have to make um, sometimes the things you, ha you have to get there. It, it's not the easiest journey, but it is worth it in the end. Compromising. Yeah. I love the fact as well that you're open and honest about the sort of the failures you've had in terms of the branding and things like that. Oh, there's um, loads. I could write a book about the failures. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the biggest things, though, isn't it? Really, is is getting past those failures and it it not stopping you. Yeah, I I think as well. I I know they are failures, but then I look at them. I've learned so much from that, so you know then how it, it just helps you progress to the next stage. Um, so it's always a good learning curve to go through the, the failing process, I think. As long as you haven't killed anybody and you're not bankrupt then and you're still standing, then you just keep going. And even if you are bankrupt, you can you can come back again. Exactly. 
yeah yeah there's a you know there's that's the thing isn't it and that's what people fear isn't it is and that i still fear it you know it wouldn't but it's what keeps you on your toes as well and what just keeps you going i think sometimes people have got that fear of failure haven't they um and it's about getting past that and just taking the risk and just going for it because yeah. Yeah, definitely. I still get fear of failure. I still think now, well, what if I don't go global? What if I, you know, well, I'll just play that video back again and think, actually, that's what I have achieved with no knowledge of really of marketing or um, the industry, the beauty industry. So I've, I've learned so much along the way. Um, you just have to try and take the positives sometimes instead of and try and feed your head with those positives if you're having a day that you're having doubts or that you're worried about failing. We've had another question come in actually in terms of um, how long it took for you to get the formula ready for sale because um, I'm sure you sort of had quite a few different tests and disasters. Yeah. And I had I had an existing client base as well that um with my spray tans so I would sometimes say well it's I the guide color was too light so then I went back I said it's too light I need it to be darker but not orange um so there was that process but I was only it was only me that was using it at the time then um no yeah it took I'd have to look back but I think it took over a year I think about maybe 18 months um from and i'd started working on the the branding pre you know previously on and off sort of going up to this farmer's house and saying try that or try this and and uh, that's what we came up with initially um so but i just hadn't i just thought well i just need the logo to put on the bottles and i hadn't really sat down and gone through the branding process as one should as i did the second time round where we were talking about our ideal customers and um you know what color what i liked and what i didn't like and all that came into play um and it didn't the first time around it was just can you just do a logo for me um so yeah it took a while oh, amazing thank you so much for that i've uh, i've learned loads listening to you today um and you know what you were saying about having that uh, usp um, the unique selling point um, and just taking your idea and actually making it happen. Um, there's a quote actually that I, um, bear with me a moment, that I found when I was looking looking at your, your company, I found a quote which I loved and uh, I, think <laughs> I think it's something that yeah. we all need to take into consideration. So my confidence is real, my tan is fake. I love yeah. that. <laughs> and do you know another thing I was thinking the other day because I was talking with somebody about imposter syndrome and how to how can you overcome it how can it you know it stops so many people from taking that first step or from you know starting their own business and I was like well say if somebody said to you you've got nine months to live you wouldn't care about imposter syndrome you would just do you would just live your life you would do what you want to do and we are on a tight you know we are on a we have got one day less haven't we every year not that we've you know but i just say just do something with it what's the worst that can happen you know you're your own worst critic so i would just say just jump we need more entrepreneurs in this country especially after um this covid and even if it does start as a side hustle um it's got to start somewhere hasn't it it's an ideal time actually isn't it for innovation at the moment it's amazing um how many companies have actually popped up um you know and have used technologies that they've got in a different way um so i've already seen sort of lots of uh, innovation happening in the community which is amazing so i just want to say a massive thank you uh sean ed for doing the session today for us and um, we've got loads of thanks on the uh, on the chat um, people saying that they love the name, thanking you for the session, um, the fact that you've made it sound so simple, so thank you for that. Um, and they all think it's a great brand, so amazing, thank you. So I'm going to hand you over now to Vampia, who is going to talk you through the Simply Do platform. Thank you, Sean Ed. Thank you. Mm. 
hi everyone yeah i really enjoyed that shana i thought that was very interesting and i really enjoyed it thoroughly um yeah just a quick recap as we said um the simply do platform so the female founders platform is in conjunction with these events set up by Quartech. it will take five seconds to get yourself registered go in on www.sdi.click forward slash make it happen put that in your browser register and you can start your idea so this is a place as mentioned before where you can put your idea down on paper flesh it out through the six step process that we'll put you through and we are always on hand for any questions that you have and a quick important point that i want to make that i forgot to make earlier is what Whatever you put on the platform, whatever your idea is, however many ideas you put, they are yours, they are, pri they are private and they won't be shared with anyone without your consent. And that's everything from me. Thank you very much. Um, so just finally, uh, bear with me a second, the screen is just moving on. Um, just want to remind you all that there's one final session in this series. So the next session is on business basics. So the necess necessities that you're going to need to know. So we'll be having a look at um, financing your business and all those different types uh, of aspects. So I just want to take a final opportunity to say thank you uh, to Seaned from Tanya Whitebits and also for you, Rodri, for stepping in when I had all those technical glitches. And thank you, Zantia, for introducing the Simply Do Ideas platform. And uh, thank you very much to Nat West for funding um, this project, which will hopefully enable plenty of future female founders uh, to take their idea into reality. So thank you very much, everybody.